So good morning, everyone. Um, Rizan here from Kuala Lumpur, uh, representing BAE Systems. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, this is our second time um, delivering uh, our research on b -Side Singapore. Um, the last presentation was done last year. Um, let's not waste time and uh, let's start with our presentation. The topic today we'd like to speak about is about uncovering zero days in healthcare management applications. Um, three vulnerability researchers involved is um, Aidan, Ali and myself. Next slide, please. The agenda for this uh, short uh, talk would include some background on the DVR, um, some past statistics that we have gathered and then we move on to the technical findings, this disclosure timeline, and last but not least, the conclusion and what we have learned from this uh, VR. Next, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so we chose Open EMR. It's an open source system. Uh, it's used in about 5,000 installations, according to the website. And because it's fully open source, <clears throat> there are, um, there's a flexibility of us of using the source code um, to do uh, white box analysis. Now, we, we chose this method and we also chose this particular software in, in, uh, in, in particular because um, we also did some background checks on, on, on the software. Um, one mainly is that it's widely used. Secondly, most importantly, it has been receiving and uh, publishing uh, CVEs uh, for the few years in the past. Um, if you see the next slide over here, <clears throat> since 2012, this, this um, CVE history was taken from the uh, Mitre website. And as you can see, they have been accepting um, security bugs from researchers since 2012. And this is what led us to choose Open EMR as um, the, the source of our uh, VR project. Yeah, and as you can see uh, um, in, in the past, uh, <clears throat> there were a couple of critical and high vulnerabilities reported. And the last one uh, was reported in 2021. And in fact, in 2022, we contributed um, some of it. Next slide, please. Now, the, the VR project, I mean, the VR analysis is not rocket science. Uh, but before we delve into the, um, um, the, the, the project, we had to first analyze and find out what vulnerabilities were discovered in the past by other researchers. Now, um, we, when we Googled, we found that Project Insecurity, um, another um, uh, VR group out there, had already um, published uh, dozens of SQL injections, RCEs, since um, when was it? In, in the last, last year or so, right? In 2021 in particular. So with this discovery, we, we knew that there was a challenge because if the code base did not change much, um, it might mean that we might not find um, the, the, the high severity vulnerabilities like SQL and, and RCE. But <clears throat> any, anyway, we, we still decided to, to pursue this project, uh, Open EMR, um, as, um, as our VR project, because we felt that it, it's a challenge. But at the same time, um, we know that the project is, is open uh, to receiving uh, security bugs. Now, <clears throat> a bit more of um, research before we actually start the project. Um, there was a website, Sona Block, that reported in 2020 um, a couple of um, high severity vulnerabilities were published. As you can see, the CVEs are here. Uh, this was for version Open EMR 5.0.21, right? And th this posed a challenge to us, but nevertheless, uh, it did not deter us from uh, pursuing the, 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 the VR um, uh, research. Now we'll move on to the um, <clears throat> um, how how do I say the process of, of uh, researching uh, of finding these bugs. Now th the bugs that we found are, are not rocket science. Yeah, um, we, we are not full time security researchers. Um, we we are a bunch of uh, pen testers and red teamers. Um, our job is is not really to do security research, but we take on this opportunity uh, in between projects when when we when we don't have uh, anything else to do. Uh, we delve into VR, so uh, we have about maybe a month. 
uh, in, in a year to, to share that time among the three of us to just have a look and, and see what we can find using the same methodology that we used uh, in, in a typical pen test. Now, firstly, on, on the left-hand side here, you see there, there is a, a manual source code analysis and black box testing. So we combine these two methods um, by downloading the, the source code and analyzing it um, manually by our eye and, and also using uh, black box testing, meaning uh, we use uh, a burp suite, for example, to just fuzz the endpoints. Now, what we found um, were two very, very common bugs that we, we mainly find in a typical uh, pen test project. Um, the first one is the insufficient authorization checks or IDORs. Some people call it authorization issue. And secondly, we found a lot of cross-site scripting errors. So with a combination of, of these two, we produced the POCs and, and uh, we, we just put together a report and we notified the open EMR project. Uh, we were pretty sure that they are active and, and they were uh, receiving um, uh, bug reports from us and they, they immediately acknowledged it. And um, so after we submitted the, the POC and the reports, uh, it took them a while to fix it. Uh, we'll go through the timeline. And after they have fully uh, rectified the bugs and published the, um, the fixes, uh, we decided to um, how do you say, uh, register these this bugs uh, in, in uh, MyTrack for, for CVEs. Now, this, this is the uh, overall um, status of, of the project that we took on. So it's an open EMR, um, open source uh, electronic medical record system. Um, the version that we, we researched was version 6.0. The latest release version was January 5th, 2021. This might have already changed. Um, and mention here the uh, security researchers involved and the type of bugs that we found. In total, we found Eight vulnerabilities. However, it's more than that. Uh, we didn't want to bloat it too much. Um, one particular vulnerability in respect to the IDORs, we had over 60 of them. And um, my colleague Aiden will walk, will walk through some of it. But we, we categorized most of the vulnerabilities into just eight of them. And as you can see here, this, these are the breakdown of each vulnerability that we found. Um, mainly uh, two highs, um, one, two, three, four, five, five lows and, uh, and one, sorry, six lows and one, sorry, six medium and one low. Now, let's start with the first one. Uh, I mentioned about the IDOR, the typical uh, authorization issue. This, this is a very typical uh, common vulnerability that we find uh, where a non-privileged user, uh, such as an accountant or a front office person, can actually view patient records. So the patient records are mainly reserved for privileged users such as the medical staff. And what we found was by logging in into a lower privileged uh, user account, we were able to see uh, patient medical records that contain uh, PII, such as their name, their, their, their date of birth, the type of uh, medical uh, ailments that, uh, and the treatment that they are receiving. And um, basically this issue is very easily rectified. Um, it's the, the authorization cookie um, that was not checked. There was no um, ACL um, authorization uh, check on the, the corresponding page on the vulnerable pages to, to validate whether the user is allowed to view that particular record or not. So if you look at the bottom here, the affected URL, we mentioned specifically the endpoint, the open EMR interface, patient file summary uh, record disclosure. And now this, this particular URL is, is submitted in a GET request. It's, it requires authentication, meaning you have to have at least um, a low privilege uh, user account. Um, and if you know the particular, uh, if you know this particular endpoint, the affected endpoint, all you got to do is just plug this into your, into your browser and you should be able to view the patient record. At the end here, there, there is a parameter, the edit lead, which I can't see because my avatar is blocking. Um, can, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so th this is how the records look like if you are logged on as an um, administrator. Now, th these are the uh, a sample patient record that we just created, just some test records. Uh, as you know, um, we, we downloaded the source code, we, we, we load them into a VM uh, running Apache Linux, and, and yeah, we just created um, some test, test user accounts with test data. And now, as logging in as an administrator, you should be able to see this record. That's normal. Now, what we did was, second page, by tampering the, 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 the endpoint, the URL I mentioned just now, uh, using the accounting one user, 
we can still view the patient record. As you can see over here, the, 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 the demographics, the documents, the transactions, the medical record panel is still visible, right? And it's very, very simple. I mentioned it, it, it is a, a GET statement, which we will see in the next page. So this, this is the, the vulnerable endpoint where I mentioned the edit lead equals to three. Now, just by changing this, this number, uh, incrementing it um, three, four, five, six, and so forth, you'll be able to view other users' record. Now, the only thing is that um, the cookie here, um, highlighted in red, this is the accountant user cookie. Now, by right, he should not be able to access that endpoint using this cookie. So it's as simple as just knowing which endpoint to browse to in your, in, in your web browser, and you will be able to view the patient record. Is that straightforward? So moving to the next slide, please. And this is how it looks like if you don't use Burp. So for example, um, if you just open up your browser, log in as uh, accountant one, which is a low privilege user, and it just so happened that you know the, the, the endpoint that points to the uh, medical record, just plug it into the browser, change the, the parameter um, at, at the end there, the edit lead uh, equals to three, and increment it by, by, by one, and you will be able to see other patient records, which you should not. So this, this is a typical uh, classic IDOR case and uh, not very difficult to discover. Um, I guess the, the last security researchers were very focused on the uh, SQL injections and the RCE. Um, perhaps it could be that, or perhaps maybe the, the code base was, was changed after uh, the research. Now, in, in the next slide here, uh, what I did was I, I, want, I wanted to find out uh, what was the issue. Um, it, we know it's an IDOR issue. So I, I, I traced back to, to the PHP page that was responsible for displaying this data. And it, it boiled down to the record disclosure.php. Now, when, when I looked at it, I just looked at the, at, at the top uh, first uh, 30 lines. Uh, I noticed there are no ACL checks there. So this page is open for, for, for anyone uh, that, that has a valid session ID, a session cookie, for example. Now, after we have submitted these bugs, uh, this, this box was discovered in version six. Uh, after we have discovered it, we, we submitted, it took them a while to fix it. And in version 6.1, what I noticed was from line number 23 to 27, they added the ACL check. And at the same time, line 31 onwards, also they added another ACL check there. And if you press enter, Aiden, there you go. So th this, these were the two checks they added after the, uh, I mean, to fix the bug yeah, uh, after version six. So it's quite, it's quite straightforward. Um, it just do, uh, does a check um, wh whether the, the records uh, uh, should be uh, displayed to this particular user. If the user does not have the authorization, it will just uh, spill a not authorized uh, error message and then exit that function. So that, that's how, that's how we, we, we found out uh, how they fixed the issue. And um, next slide, please. So now I'm going to pass this to my colleague. So uh, I mentioned that uh, we, we, we recorded only eight vulnerabilities, yeah? But in, one, in, in this particular vulnerability, the IDOR, there's actually 62 of them. But we, we are not out to, to amass um, 62 CVEs, yeah? We, we just want to make our point. So we, we just um, open up an, another uh, finding and I'll, I'll pass it to, to Aiden to um, give his explanation on uh, the further analysis of the IDOS found on, on the other pages. Go ahead, okay. Aiden. Okay, cool. Uh, can you hear me, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Aiden. I'm going to talk about the CVE 2022-2493. It is a missing uh, function level access control issue. In this uh, open EMR, there are total five user rules. Type one is the super admin, which have the access to all the modules. And the another four user rules are considered as a standard user, but they have their own modules and permission. Based on my findings, these four standard user rules were able to access to uh, several admin modules. Other than that, I found that the four standard user rules have a promiscuous privacy issue, meaning that, uh, for example, accounting user supposed to view the billing and payment info, but in this case, the front office vaccination and creation can view the billing and payment also. This conclude that this is an access control issue. Usually, this type of vulnerability can't be picked up by automated tool, as you require manual testing to identify it. In total, 
we found 62 vulnerable endpoints in this application. With the last number of instances, so we consolidate them into one CV, uh, one issue because they are in the same category. And I don't think they will issue us a 62 CVE for us. And the recommendation for this issue is don't rely on the UI to implement the access control and require server-side validation. Um, this is the list of the vulnerable endpoints. I only show part of it here because there are too many. Uh, red, red color box you see here, meaning that the user is unauthorized to access to the modules. Green you see here is the user is authorized to access to the modules. What I would like to highlight here is that there are several I admin mean, modules can be accessible by any standard user roles. And also we can see that the front office designation creation can be accessed by any of the, uh, uh, can access to the billing and the payment info, which only can access by the accounting. I will show some example in the following slide. The first POC is any user to admin modules, any user can access to the admin modules. In order to exploit this vulnerability, we need to identify the endpoints of the modules. This is how the open EML admin dashboard looks like. So when I try to browse to the affected uh, modules call form administration, um, as we can see, the far path is remaining the same strap main.php. It will be the same if we browse to another module as well. There are some process on the bed that we cannot see by our naked eyes. In, all, in order for us to discover the real path, we can use the inspect element in the browser and release it, but this is may not very user-friendly. Therefore, we can use a POSI tool called Bird Suite. Uh, this is one of the essential tools for the web security testing. I believe maybe some of you may use or see it before. In the bird suite policy, we can capture all the HTTP requests before sending to the server. As we can see that I can capture the multiple endpoint from the application, but the key finding here is the form and main endpoint that I highlighted. Um, now we have the affected URL. The next thing we need to do is to log in to the lowest previous user in the application. In this case, I use front office. What we can see from the front office dashboard is there is no administrator header, meaning that there is no way for us to go to the, uh, navigate to the admin modules if we don't know the endpoint. We can browse to the affected URL that we captured earlier to unauthorize access to the admin modules. With the access to these modules, the, uh, the unauthorized user is allowed to modify the form access control within the application, meaning that this module is allowed an attacker to gain more access to the other modules. Same go to the this example, the front office don't have the right to access to a building manager. As we can see, there is no fees header in this uh, 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 front office dashboard menu. On the bot, but this is not this, but in this case, we can access the build manager. On the bottom of the picture, we can see there is a patient uh, building record. And we click and go further on the record, we can, we can see the patient payment and we also can issue the billing without paying any fee. Uh, that's it for the PLC for, of this CVE. Actually, there are more instant, but due to the timing of this presentation, we only selected these two that, that I think is the most impactful example. I will pass it to Ali to present his uh, next uh, findings. Yeah, thank you, Eden. Um, morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ali. Um, I will present the vulnerability that I found, which unprivileged user can create a new rule and lead to stored cross-site scripting. Um, so this um, issue is that that unprivileged user that uh, that include accountant and also uh, front office, they can create a 
a new rule and inject a web script on the vulnerable endpoint and with the vulnerable parameter. So the payload could trigger a stored SSS in the plan rules and that can only be accessible by privileged user or admin user. Our recommendation is quite simple. Um, do not trust any control user input parameter that sent to the server and ensure to sanitize it before displaying or reflecting it on the website. And overall, we found four store SSS and one reflected SSS and all of these vulnerabilities need to be authenticated to reproduce the issue. So before I jump to the issue reproduction of the CVE 2022-1179, I will show you what is inside OpenEMR SMS. So inside this application, there are a lot of forms, uh, modules, and subcategory inside the OpenEMR SMS. Um, for me, as a beginner in variety research, you might feel overwhelmed and struggle. Um, you can press enter and then there might be two more. Yep. And with these things, you might want to find what is the best methodology that you want to use while researching. So I focus more into SSS and found one simple technique to be used, uh, but also efficient. And I will explain it on the next slide. So um, imagine that when we try to browse into some pages in the applications, um, we might encounter a lot of inputs. So what we can do is we just use a simple payload like uh, script and alert and utilize control C and control V. So what I did is I take note of the endpoints that I found and set a range for that endpoints only. For example, on this input that you can see, I put a range one until nine um, and take note of that endpoints. So when we browse again to uh, different pages and found uh, a new forms, yeah, you can press enter then. Yeah, thank you. And we can see that we set a different range, for example, 10 until 11. And again, take note of that endpoints. So keep doing this and always take note of the range of numbers that we did and that endpoints. So by doing this, when we try to browse into different pages, we might see a pop-up with different numbers. So why we're doing this is to ensure that we identify where is the payload coming from. And since we are going to browse into different endpoints and we might not see the SSS reflected on the same pages, but it might be reflected on different pages inside the application. And that's how uh, we could get the CVEs that related to the SSS. And now I'm going to explain the issue reproduction for this CVE 2022-1179. As you can see uh, in the image, the administrator page will have a subcategory of rules in the GUI, but not in the case of accounting user. They do not have any access of the subcategory of rules in the GUI. So what we did is um, we intercept the request of an admin and trying to create a new rule. And we can change the cookie to a counting user or non unprivileged user. And we also identify that one of the parameter is vulnerable to SSS. So we can inject it with uh, SSS cookie still payload uh, using fetch. And by using fetch, it will not redirect, but it will just make a request to the targeted server or attacker server, and we pass the document cookie in the URL parameter of C. So for example, if an admin trying to go or browse into the page of rules and view any rules, eventually it will send a request to um, the attacker. Uh, as you can see in here, we have the admin cookie in the URL parameter of C. So with this cookie, the attacker could uh, use it and utilize it to further their malicious intent. So what we can, what they can do is they can update in their browser of the admin cookie, or if they have the endpoints that they want, they might change it in the bug suite um, request and the cookie headers. 
And um, if you press enter again, all right, thank you. Uh, we can see that if the attacker browse into any endpoints, even though that we are accountant in the browser, but the endpoints will still see us as administrator and they might do a lot of things in here. And that's how we can reproduce this issue. And I will hand over to Rizan for the next slide. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. All right. So let's go through the uh, disclosure timeline. Now, we initially reported the findings in December, sorry, September 2021. Uh, we received a couple of back and forth emails um, from the Open EMR, from the Open EMR security team. Uh, up to at least uh, 4th of October, 2021. Um, after which they said that um, the release of the uh, batches will come in batches. Uh, and it was only in April 24th, 2022, that all the bugs, all, all 60 plus, the, the ones, the plus eight CVEs uh, were fully patched. And only then um, we started um, triaging it um, to uh, Maitre uh, to get the CVEs issued. Now, this was a challenge, um, but nevertheless, we, we made it and um, the, the full disclosure um, timeline um, and uh, information details, everything were published. Now, um, these are some of the learning curves, um, learning nuggets that we, we, we learned. Yeah? Um, firstly, um, we focus on bugs with business impact. Um, we, we skip all the silly things like missing security headers, weak ciphers, stuff like that. Um, we use the source code for, for analysis. Um, and I think the most important is the third item, choosing your VDP targets wisely. This was a tactical move rather than a technical move because we didn't want to choose a, a VDP or, or a, a project where they they did not, um, how do they say, that they don't respond to you or they say you, you are not allowed to fully disclose your findings. Um, the, the worst case scenario is that uh, they might um, not even um, acknowledge uh, the, the work that you have uh, given. So that's why I, at the first few slides, I mentioned that uh, we analyze our, our VDP programs uh, pretty carefully before we decide to actually move in on it. Uh, but at the same time, we know that um, a lot of the high severity bugs, the, the, the SQL injections, the RCEs were already discovered. But we felt that they, if we dig a bit deeper, we should be able to find and, and we were right about it. So um, don't, don't be discouraged if you see programs where there they were uh, previously a lot of uh, uh, hunters that have already reported bugs. They, they might still be some inside there. Um, I, I mentioned about triaging. Um, going through my tray was, um, I wouldn't say difficult, but it was uh, a, a bit time consuming. Um, so we, we used um, uh, hunter.dev. Uh, hunter.dev, I really shout out to them. Uh, they helped us a lot. Um, they, they, they triage all um, security bugs reported to them um, in GitHub. So go ahead and check them out. Um, if, if you have any uh, bugs that you find in, in uh, GitHub uh, repositories, you can triage it through Hunter and, and they, they help you to, uh, they even give uh, uh, cash bounties, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't accept them uh, because we, we were doing this on behalf of, of uh, our organization and um, the, the money was, was not ne never claimed. Um, but um, they, they helped us to issue the, the CVEs in, in a timely fashion. Uh, another point to, to, to state is that uh, VR, uh, depending on the, the kind of uh, targets that, that you um, uh, experiment or, or research in, it, it's not, it doesn't mean it has to be difficult. Uh, uh, it, it's suitable for, for beginners too. Uh, in fact, we, we, we are not full-time security researchers. We are full-time pen testers and red teamers. Um, so doing VR is, is more like a tactical uh, move uh, rather than a, a technical one. Um, the, the, the vulnerabilities that we found are, are common OWASP vulnerabilities. And uh, I think uh, last but not least is uh, working as a team and sharing your knowledge. So learning, learning from my colleagues and, um, and also learning from what's, what's out there. Um, it, it really helped us uh, to sharpen our skills in, in VR and also at the same time, sharpen our skills in, in regular pen testing that we, that we do on a daily basis. Um, that's all for our presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll be taking questions in, uh, in Discord or over here, I guess.